Okay, so now, <clears throat> let's take this example here. And so what we have is we have a water trough, okay? And so the water trough is 15 feet long, has ends of eight feet, or excuse me, I'm sorry, has ends like an inverted isosceles triangle. And uh, the base of the triangle is eight feet and the height is three feet. So it says find the force on one end of the trough if the trough is full of water. Okay, so I drew a picture here of the trough. So we, this is what we have, right? So we have an isosceles, tr inverted isosceles triangle for the base. So the, we know that these two sides are the same because it's an isosceles triangle. And so we know that the height of this triangle is three feet and the base is uh, eight feet. And so then I drew the end here and with my frame of reference, right? So I'm going to make, since it's full of water, I'm going to have my x equal to zero right here at the top of the trough. And then so the depth going down is going to be positive, okay? And so then I labeled the base here is eight feet. And the depth of the trough, which is the height of the triangle, is three feet. Okay, and so now what we want to do is we want to find, um, again, I just want a strip. So if I just draw a line across here, right, a little strip here, okay, like that, then what am I doing? Well, the depth of that strip is what? It's, it's x, right? And the width of it is like the delta x, the width of the strip, right? But that's just going to become my dx. So if it's really, really, really thin, I can just treat this depth of this little strip as x. The width of the strip is based on the triangle. Okay, so now let's do a couple things. The width is not changing. It starts at 8, but it's decreasing as you go down. So how are we going to figure that out? Well, let's, let's look at the Pythagorean theorem. So we know this is 3, this triangle here, this is 4, right? which means this side has to be 5 using the Pythagorean theorem or the special triangles, the 3, 4, 5 triangle. Okay, so we need to figure out our depth function, right? So let's do that. So S of X, well, that's just going to equal X. Now, what about W of X? Okay, so the width How can we relate the width related to x? Well, let's call this a. And let's use similar triangles. So if I know, let's, let's see what this does for us. Let's see if this gets us anywhere. So if I know this is 8, then what happens with this height of this triangle, the smaller triangle? Well, this is going to be 8 minus x, right? So if we set up similar, a proportion again, so if we set up, okay, 8 goes with 4, right? 8 goes, no, 
Okay, we could do it that way, but... So, 8, this side corresponds to this side, so we're going to get 8 minus x is equal to 4 over a. So now we want to represent a because that's what's going to change as we go on. So let's solve a in terms of x. So then if we do that, we get a equals 4 times 8 minus x over 8, which means that this is going to equal um, 8 minus x over 2, which is going to equal 4 minus x over 2. Okay. Hold on a second, I messed up somewhere. Hold on. Is that right? Hold on a second. I just want to make sure I think I'm right. I'm sorry. I I was my it's I uh I got messed up with the eight here. The, this is not eight. The depth is three. I apologize. I got lost in my thinking here. So the depth of the because I erased the three here and then I wrote eight for some reason. I I don't know why. So let me let me do that again. So. This is three, okay? So then this would be three minus x. Okay, so that's, okay, so this is how it's gonna change. Three, so three, and three, and so then, We get that. So let me see. Oh, hold on. This is three, two. Yep. And this, this becomes three. And this becomes three. No. Uh, so this becomes three over three minus x, four over that. So that times that over that. Yes. Okay. And then that becomes. Yeah, then that yeah, then that's where we end right there. Okay. Okay, I apologize. So let me just recap. So the depth here is three, right? Not eight. That's where I made a mistake. And so if the depth is three, then this length is three minus x. And then we can use similar triangles and go three is to four right, of this larger triangle, three goes with, excuse me, three goes with three minus x, because we're, this length corresponds to this length. 
So we can go 3 is two, goes with 3 minus x, and then 4 goes with a. So we get 4 goes with a. So this is our proportion. And then if we solve for a, you basically cross multiply and solve for a, you get 4 times 3 minus x divided by 3, and that's a. Okay? Now, that's not the width, though. The width is double, right? Because our reference point goes right down the middle. So the width is going to be double a, so 2 times a. So that means our width, our function for the width, is going to be um, is going to be double that. So, let's simplify this. So I'm going to distribute the 8 and split it up into two fractions. So we get 24 minus 8x over 3 which is then going to give us what? It's going to give us 8 minus 8x over 3. And that's your width function. So now, all we have to do is put it together with the density of water, right? So now let's go up here. And put it together. So the force is going to be from what to what? So we're going from 0 to 3, not 8. So we're going from 0 to 3, right? And our, it's good, our uh, equation is rho times w of x times s of x dx let's do a to b and so that's going to give us 0 to 3 and our row okay so now here's where we're dealing with feet so the density the the um, um, weight density of water in it, when you're dealing with uh, feet is going to be uh, 62.4 okay that's the number we want to use and then w of x is just x minus 8x over 3 and then s of x is just x dx and now we're ready to just calculate this thing So let's go for it. So this is going to be from 0 to 8, not 8, 0 to 3. And this is going to be 62.4 times. Now it's going to be 8x minus 8x squared over 3 and dx. And now we're going to integrate. So let's Pull the 62 out, so 62.4, and what's this going to be? This is going to end up being 4x squared minus, uh, this is going to end up being what? Uh, 8 ninths, so 8x cubed over 9, and this is going to be evaluated from 0 to 8, and of course, because we've got x's in both terms, at 0, this whole thing is going to be 0, so let's just evaluate it at 8. So this is going to be 62.4 times 4 times 8 squared minus 8 times 8 cubed 
over 9. And so if you stick this in your calculator, you get about 74 point, uh, 70, 748.8. And so that represents the hydrostatic um, force, and that's in pounds, right? Because we're dealing with uh, feet and pounds. So this is in pounds. And that's it. Now, here's one for you. Again, go through the steps that I just went through. Don't make the same mistake I did, but make sure you pay attention to the numbers. So here's the example I'd like you to try. A water trough 12 meters long has ends shaped like inverted isosceles triangles with base 6 meters and height 4 meters. Find the force on one end of the trough if the trough is full of water. So same situation, just different measurements, different dimensions. So go ahead and try it. Get an answer and then let me know and I'll let you know if you did it right or if you get stuck, I can help you through it. Just send me an email with the, uh, a picture of your work attached and I'll be able to help you. Till then, have a great day.